Hello, my fellow Whovians. How you guys doing? This is Alan, and I'm back with another Doctor Who review for you. And today I'm going to be reviewing the 99th Doctor Who story, The Pirate Planet, starring Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor. The Pirate Planet, of course, written by the late great author Douglas Adams. This was the very first episode of Doctor Who that uh, Adams wrote for the series. So the plot from the back of the DVD of uh, The Pirate Planet is as follows. As the Doctor, Romana, and K-9 head for the planet Califrax in search of the second segment of the Key to Time, they are in for a surprise when the TARDIS brings them to Zanuck, an entirely different planet occupying the same space coordinates. Did Romana take a wrong turn when she navigated by the book? No, the tracer registers that the segment is near. Nothing is as it seems in this story by Douglas Adams of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The populace of Zanuck lead affluent lives, thanks to the mysterious mechanizations of the captain. He regularly announces a new age of prosperity, and most of the people accept the extraordinary turn in their fortune without further examination. Little do they imagine that their benefactor, hidden on a forbidden mountaintop, is a roaring space pirate whose best friend is a polyphase Avatron, a cyber parrot uh, that brings death to anyone who displeases its master. All these elements will come together to reveal the greatest crime in the galaxy and the second segment of The Key to Time as well. And there you go. That is your plot of The Pirate Planet. Alrighty then. The Pirate Planet. Excellent Doctor Who story. Most excellent Doctor Who story. This is definitely... One of my favorites from the Tom Baker era. It's not perfect. There is one glaring flaw in the story that I just cannot overlook, and I'll get to that flaw in a bit. But overall, this is an excellent Doctor Who story. I've always enjoyed The Pirate Planet. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a longtime Douglas Adams fan um, anyway, and I really think that this first episode that Adams wrote for Doctor Who is really, really quite entertaining stuff. It's very funny. It's very lively. It just bubbles along. And um, great entertainment from start to finish. Great performance by Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor. He's in fine form here. Mary Tam, the late great, eternally lovely, eternally talented Mary Tam. Wonderful as his companion Romana, the time lady, of course. And um, the supporting cast for this story is, uh, they're all terrific too. Um, I just love, I love all the characters in this story as well. I mean, this is a really, really great cast. Uh, besides Tom Baker and Mary Tam... Well, of course, we also have John Leeson uh, doing the voice of K-9. He's great as well. Um, I also love, uh, let's see, Bruce Purchase as the Pirate Captain. Uh, you can see he's on the cover of the DVD here. Yeah, the Pirate Captain. What a amazing character this guy is. He's a very memorable uh, one-story character. You don't ever forget the Pirate Captain. You know, by the hounds of hell! <laughs> I mean, Bruce Purchase, he's a chip off the old Brian Blessed. He really is. And he gives a marvelous, over-the-top, deliciously over-the-top performance as the pirate captain, who's also part uh, cybernetic. Uh, apparently, the captain was in some sort of crash landing accident. And so one half of his, well, maybe not one half, maybe like one third of his body is uh, cybernetic. And he has, yes, he has this robot parrot, this cyber parrot. Uh, on, on his shoulder that can kill people, <laughs> which is, uh, and, and in fact, the cyber parrot and a canine have a battle later on in this story that's uh, quite amusing to see, I must admit. Other standouts in this story, well, first of all, I want, I want to give a shout out to the two other ladies in this story besides Mary Tam. Um, there's also uh, Rosalind Lloyd as the nurse, who's basically, she's at the pirate captain's side in the story, and by the end of the story, we find out the nurse is not quite who she seems to be. Yeah, Rosalind Lloyd, a very, very strong performance as the nurse and of course once she reveals her true self i mean she is deliciously evil uh, but yes strong very strong performance by rosalind lloyd you know i looked up rosalind lloyd on the internet movie database and she has no more acting credits after 1985 whatever happened to rosalind lloyd this attractive and very very talented actress who uh i know either she's just doing theater since 1985 or she just retired and uh and never did anything else, but I think it's safe to say that her role as the nurse in the Pirate Planet is the role that she is best known for, but 
Man, I want to know whatever happened to Rosalind Lloyd. Wherever she is now, I hope she's uh, she's happy and um, living the good life wherever she is. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to the other lovely lady in this story, uh, Primi Townsend, in the role of Mula. She's she's the uh, blonde woman in this particular story, and again, she's quite endearing in the role of Mula. But uh, but yes, I like her very much. She's very very appealing in the role of Mula. Uh, as for the the rest of the guys in this story, besides Bruce Purchase playing the pirate captain, and of course, Tom Baker as the doctor. Uh, let's see, Andrew Robertson, very, very amusing in his role as uh, Mr. Fibuli. He seems to be like like third in command, Andrew Robertson as Mr. Fibuli. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just very intellectual, and he's always, like, touching his glasses, and, you know, as he talks to uh, and takes abuse from the pirate captain. <laughs> he's like the pirate captain's whipping boy, uh, Mr. Fibuli. So I like uh, Andrew Robertson very much in the role of Mr. Fibuli. Those are the standout actors for me in this particular story. But I will say all of the supporting cast of the Pirate Planet are excellent in their roles. Again, you've got a wonderfully funny, wonderfully entertaining script by uh, Douglas Adams. Great moments in the story. I mean, there's this great moment when uh, Tom Baker's doctor gets into an argument with the pirate captain who's basically bragging to the doctor about uh, all the uh, planets that he has shrunk. Because, I mean, basically the thing about Xanik is that it's, it's a hollow planet that can materialize over a smaller planet and crush it and... Uh, which of course means killing everybody on the planet and um, taking all of that planet's resources. The, you know, the uh, the smaller planet that Xanik materializes over. And uh, I remember that, that great moment when the pirate captain says something to the doctor along the lines of, you know, I thought that you would appreciate uh, my work. Something like that. And then, and then Tom Baker fires back, appreciate? Appreciate it? You know, you've, you've slaughtered millions of people and, and you're asking me if I appreciate it? What for? What purpose? For what reason? This this toy you have. I mean, it's a wonderful argument scene. I mean, it's one of my all-time favorite moments for Tom Baker in this series. I mean, he's on fire uh, in that scene. But again, he's giving a, a terrific performance for the whole thing. But that's just, that's just one of the standout scenes for me that I wanted to mention when him and the pirate captain are, are arguing and as they're going through that hall of... Uh, shrunken planets uh, that uh, the pirate captain has collected. Like I said, great moments of Douglas Adams humor sprinkled all throughout this story. Uh, great supporting cast. I also got to give credit to the director, uh, Pennant Roberts. His direction on this story is very, very solid. The look of the story is great. Interesting characters known as the Mentiads, who are all dressed up in yellow. They, they, they seem to be like some kind of cult. The, this group of men who are dressed in yellow and they all have like bleached faces. And, you know, they, they stand next to each other and, you know, they can fire beams at people or they can they can make locked doors unlock and open. And at first you think that they're the bad guys, but they're actually good guys. And they help uh, the Doctor and, and uh, Romana and company on, on their adventure here. And I like them. I like the Mentiads. But yes, the, the whole look of the story is great. Um, again, the pacing of it is perfect. Just four episodes perfect length. It's just great entertaining stuff, you know, just wonderfully entertaining, humorous, it bubbles along. I love the stuff with the air car, and the Doctor gets to fly an air car or two in this story. There's a couple of gags involving his bag of jelly babies that's also great uh, that I like. So overall, I just, I just think the Pirate Planet is a wonderful Doctor Who story. I've always enjoyed the Pirate Planet. Uh, it's, it's always been one of my favorite Tom Baker stories from Doctor Who, even though it's not a perfect story. There is one glaring flaw in the Pirate Planet that I can spot, and it, in my opinion, it keeps the Pirate Planet from classic status. The fact is there are soldiers that are dressed in black in this story, and they are the most horrible shots. <laughs> They're firing at the good guys at point-blank range all throughout this story, and they keep missing. It's so stupid. Boo, 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 at close range, and they miss over and over and over again. I mean, I haven't seen people shooting this badly in a Doctor Who story since the Gunfighters with William Hartnell. And that was god-awful, that, that the fact that, you know, people firing at each other at point-blank range and they miss. And again, same thing, the soldiers, boo, 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 close range, they don't hit anybody. <laughs> it's so hilariously bad. So maybe that was one directing flaw of Pennant Roberts, who does an otherwise great directing job on this story, but but the fact that the soldiers dressed in black, they can't shoot anything really, and they're at close range, and they keep missing, that is just so stupid. 
And uh, just and it's just one particular criticism, the one and only criticism I can find in the Pirate Planet that I just can't overlook. So because of that one ridiculous thing involving the soldiers who can't shoot straight in this story. I mean, you watch the Pirate Planet yourself and you tell me uh, if I'm imagining things. I'm not. I mean, scene for scene, they can't shoot shit. <laughs> the soldiers dressed in black so that prevents the pirate planet in my opinion from being a perfect doctor who story which is a shame but other than that one silly element in the story i, I love the pirate planet certainly one of my favorite uh, stories from uh, tom baker's key to time season i think the pirate planet is definitely one of the strongest stories from the season is it my favorite story from the key to time season you know it might be but there might be be another story that I think is a little bit better. We haven't gotten to it yet. I think I'll know by the time I'm, I'm done re-watching the Key to Time season which story from the Key to Time season is my favorite. But uh, The Pirate Planet is a wonderfully entertaining story from start to finish. Funny, great action adventure, a great acting from everybody on board. Uh, Tom Baker, Mary Tam, I love their banter in this story. Uh, great supporting characters. And again, you've got a wonderful wonderfully entertaining script from from the late great douglas adams of hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy fame strong direction by pennant roberts and um uh, yeah i really really like the pirate planet uh again this has always been one of my favorite doctor who stories it's a flawed gem it's not perfect but it's still a gem nonetheless and um yeah i like the pirate planet a lot and that's my review of the pirate planet so next time on Doctor Who Review, Doctor Who reaches a milestone. Yes, it does. Next time on Doctor Who Review, I get to review the 100th Doctor Who story. Yay! The series reaches its 100th story with the adventure where the Doctor and Romana seek out the third segment to the key to time, the Stones of Blood. Yes, the Stones of Blood, the 100th. Doctor Who story next time on Doctor Who Review. This is Alan. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for Doctor Who story number 100, The Stones of Blood.